Now that's a tr that's a Trump person. They lay on the horn. If it's if it's a Biden person, they go beep 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 beep. That's how, that's how you can tell. In the United States, it's not a question of how many votes you get, but where you get them. The U.S. uses an electoral college system to elect its president. That means that each state is given a number of votes based on the number of people it sends to Congress. That, in turn, is based on each state's population. There are 538 electoral college votes. So to win, Biden or Trump need to get 270. Most states vote roughly the same way each election. So really, there are only a few states where both candidates have a chance of winning. Some of those states have a lot more electoral college votes up for grabs than others. California, with the largest population, gets 55 electoral college votes, whereas small rural states like Wyoming and North Dakota get only three. States award all their electoral college votes to whoever won a majority of votes there. So if you won 50.1% of the votes in California, you'd get 55 electoral college votes. This meant that in 2016, Hillary Clinton got 3 million more votes than Donald Trump, but she still lost the election. There are two exceptions, Maine and Nebraska. They divide their electoral college votes proportionally. But in general, this system means you'll see Biden and Trump targeting the key battleground states, states that could swing either way and see them take all the electoral college votes. So which states to watch on election night? There are six states that everyone has their eyes on in this election. First up, those Rust Belt states that Trump won on a small majority in 2016. Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Michigan. These were once considered the blue wall, but Trump managed to turn them red at the last election, albeit with small majorities. Trump won Michigan by just 10,704 votes out of 4.7 million cast. But in the midterms, the state was swept with a wave of blue. Michigan has large white suburbs, union members, and black voters. Biden is currently ahead in the polls, and if he loses Michigan, it's hard to see how he could secure the presidency. If it hadn't been for COVID-19, Joe Biden would have accepted the Democratic nomination at the party's convention in Wisconsin. He was keen to show the importance of the state and to learn from his predecessor's mistakes. Hillary Clinton didn't visit Wisconsin once in 2016, and despite polling well there, she lost the state to Donald Trump. Before 2016, Pennsylvania was Democrat country, with lots of coal and steel communities and deep ties to the trade unions. Donald Trump campaigned hard there in 2016, promising to bring back mining and manufacturing jobs, and he's been doing the same again this time. But he faces a major obstacle. Joe Biden was born in Pennsylvania, spending his early years in the city of Scranton. Over here, where the city part of Scranton is, everybody's for Biden. But once you go out maybe 10, 15 minutes towards the farms, a lot of Trump supporters over there. So I think it's like kind of a mixture over here. But it is Joe Biden's town, so it's, I believe it's more Biden. At the moment, the polls are showing Biden winning in all three states. The other three to watch are the southern sunbelt states of Florida, Arizona, and North Carolina. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines! Florida is almost always close in presidential elections. It's generally a conservative state, but it's also diverse demographically. Since 1964, the candidate that has won Florida has also won the White House, apart from in 1992. So whilst it's a state that's hard to predict, Florida itself is pretty good at predicting presidents. Democrats haven't won Arizona since 1996, so it might be seen as odd that it's a swing state. But a growing Latino population, migration from California, and changing attitudes from white college educated voters could just turn this state blue. North Carolina was once a red state through and through. They elected Republicans in the 80s, in the 90s, and the early 2000s. But Obama won here in 2008, just. North Carolina's demographics are changing Many people from traditional blue states are moving to the Tar Heel state. The state's voting habits are divided between urban and rural areas. In 2016, suburban voters turned out for Donald Trump, and he'll be hoping they do the same this time to deliver North Carolina's 16 electoral college votes. That all changes starting right here and right now. The advertising spend and the travel plans of the Trump and Biden campaigns make clear that these six states are the ones to watch.